Audio is back, and we are back with Blender today, number 40. It's uh, it's it's a beta time. It's not today. It's not gonna be tomorrow. It's it's hard to tell, right? It's, it's ready when it's ready. Today is Monday, and it's uh, the day where developers get together and then define what's gonna be the topic, um, and like what what's gonna be the next thing to to fix or to work on in Blender. One of those topics was like hey, the beta. The meeting today went over like over one hour or so it was very uh yes lots of topics to cover some of them brought uh some uh, interface things that had to be refigured for um reconfigured for the um, for like motion tracking for example it, there was a big change in the ui recently and it it doesn't really work and to fix it with and to make it work you have to use active tools or rethink everything so that's not something you want to do through the beta. So that, for example, that commit is going to be reverted to the previous interface, just the one everybody knows, and it's going to come uh, come back when when it's uh, actually ready. So like this kind of discussion. So when things are um, uh, are ready, they're going to come back. Like in like like the the grease pencil is coming back, but it's coming back much more optimized. So there is, oh, thank you, Stella. That's very nice. So I, I'm going to share the screen here now because so you guys can see yourself here. So thank you very much. One, two, three, four, Stella. I appreciate it. I have uh, here a list long of, um, now I have a long list of things to cover. But first, I was going to, I made the thread to ask you guys to, uh, to leave your questions on Blender today. But you, you beat me to it. I didn't even share the link and there's already 17 comments. So here's the link for those that were not updating, refreshing the website so often. So um, I'm going to get to the, to the long list of changes that this week I actually had to make a Google Doc because all the changes didn't fit in one. Yes, that's what we're going to see today. But first, let me show you the uh, some, something regarding the community. So Blender today is the place where we share the, uh, in this case, where I ask you to ask me questions. So the uh, Blender today is part of a uh, of another group of communities, which is called Blender Community. This website is uh, was updated recently, so um, mainly because one of the most important, if not the most important, community in this website is called um, Blend. Uh, right click select. Right click select. It's one of those. Uh, it, it's basically the same. You have posts. You up down uh, up vote down vote. But the um, the the main thing is that it's a proposal, right? The a proposal on what to change, what could change in Blender, and these um, uh, topics need to be marked as done, or is it really in progress? And uh, I think internet is really slow for some reason now. I hope uh, it's not affecting the <laughs> the streaming, but. Okay, that's very strange. Anyway, the um, one of the the requests from right click select was to be able to mark some of the um, the posts as done or is it in progress. So if the website loads for you somewhere else, let's let's see if I can load it again. Seems to be stuck. Is everything stuck? No, Blender.org is just as usual. Okay, something with Blender community. Oh, oh maybe that's because you all of you guys are holy crap. Every oh wow. Huh. Okay, so it's your fault, guys, that now everything is down. That is very nice. Thank you. Okay. A little hug of death. Yes. Uh, but come on, that it that feels so good that you guys are actually able to do that. Well, you will find it. In right-click select now on the top, you'll find status. Uh, filter a new f a way to filter things so you can I'm gonna leave you to to it I hope I can read the the, the commits the the questions sorry later um, besides that the <laughs> it's just funny we never had that before the hack of death um, besides that there is other uh, the community did stuff that I wanted to talk about is that the um in the forums in the user feedback i recently last week as of friday i made a call for themes 
So this very important topic that Blender 2.8 cannot ship without, no, no, of course not. It's just static thing. Some there were comments saying like, why do we worry about themes? Just work in making Blender more stable. Where this is actually done by the community. The community, you, me, everyone. Actually, I want to, I want to submit my own themes here. I want to submit the, the blue. Flatty Dark Blueberry and the Amaranth one. Um, the, the community was asked to contribute with making themes. This process that takes so long because the, the editor is far from perfect, but a lot of brave people went through the task of just making beautiful themes. Some of them are super different and that's good because it's just a, it's such a different approach. It just makes it look so, um, yeah, like a different software and or similar to other softwares that are like more CAD style or that's pretty nice. Some of them are uh, just like the regular one, but with some tweaks that actually I think I'm going to be inspired <laughs> by and, and apply some of these changes to the default theme because it gains on uh, contrast. Oh, this is with a, with a palette even. So yes, there is so many good ones. So clean. So look at that. Actually, oh, I really like this one. I haven't seen it. So fresh. Nice. All right. So yes, Blender will ship with a number of themes. We're going to pick eight of them and we plan on including them in Blender officially. So submit your own and OK, some of them are very interesting. <laughs> if um, yeah, if you find one that you like, please give it a, a, a little heart here. You need, you need to log in with your Blender ID and you'll be able to do it. This one is very similar to to the fl Flatty Dark Blueberry, but I actually like this one better, I think, because of the highlight. Awesome. Well, this is all for the themes. Please submit the ones that you like. The other contest, not contest, but like call for content that it's been um, it, it's still alive. It's not part of, it, it's still not gone. It was supposed to be only for a few days, but the beta is delayed a little bit. So why even rushing? So please, if you still have some artwork to submit for the splash screen, like this awesome one, it's very nice. Um, with the, <laughs> with the default cube and the crisp pencil slash Eevee. And, uh, the thing is a very nice concept of uh, how to, how to tackle, um, this new Blender 2.8 splash. It's gonna be the splash for the beta, right? Just remember that. It's not gonna be the final, final splash for the time being. It's gonna be the beta. And for the final splash, probably it will be something from Spring Open Movie Project because it's really the project that is pushing more, uh, the most, uh, making Blender stable. Actually, it's the, the first project to use 2.8. Not, no, actually, not right. To, uh, Hero was the first project, but the, um, the, the first one to use cycles and the new collections and all the stuff. So next, besides all of that news, I'm going to go here through my list, Blender community update, and let's get to Blender. Let's see what is in Blender. So Blender, that software, that rear software that you select with right click, is no longer gonna be known as it, or it's gonna be known as the one that uses right click select, but it's very simple to change it to left click select because a lot of work was done to make this happen, to make the selection, the, the, the change um, left to right useful, basically, to make it like, a, like something that you can work on. There were a few um, kinks with the previous way it worked, and especially it was a bit hidden. Like you have to go to the user preferences, to the input. So you had to make a bunch of clicks in order to change your left click. That is now no longer the case. So, okay, here I already have my settings, but say for example, if, if you were, um, if you just boot Blender. So for example, if I don't have a 2.80 uh, folder on my user settings, so I, sh open Blender for the very first time. I'm going to be greeted with this. Let's see if I can make it uh, bigger. Yeah. So basically it's a select width. No, it's not going to work. Uh, basically is a, in the splash screen, you can choose, you can choose which click to select with left click, right click, no middle click. What happened to the people that really like the middle click? 
the uh, UI is gonna maybe change. Right now it says select with, it doesn't say click. Maybe it could say left click or right click. That was suggested in the dev talk um, <clears throat> uh, forums. The other things you can choose, of course, is the key map that hasn't changed. That's the same as before. And the themes for now, it's only light and dark because the, uh, and the light still needs some fixing. That's, that's on my desk. <laughs> and then the dark. So that is the default and left click, right click is going to change a bunch of things. Actually, if you choose to use left, once you're using blender, this is still being worked on. So don't, don't, don't go crazy yet. It's that the default tool is going to be the selection. As you can see up here, the, let, let me give, make the UI slightly bigger for you. So the default tool is selection now. So you can actually just left click to select and then you can drag and draw a box for box selection. What? Isn't this crazy? The same click blender becoming industry standard. Well, that is, uh, yeah, that, that's happening. It's happening. You can click select a the box. Then if you right click, what do you think is going to happen? Well, you get a context menu. So all these changes are happening now. If you have a, uh, if you use left click select this, it still needs a lot of, uh, tweaking. There is a thread. So please provide user feedback regarding the uh, left mountain, uh, left mountain, um, selection. It's, uh, it's this thread, but there's also another thread that was actually open by here, left click, select key map. This is the thread the what you have to go. Um, if you go up here, it's a thread three days ago, open by Brecht, the main, one of the main developers of blender. There's a project manager of 2.8. So here's, uh, suggesting the chain, the, uh, not suggesting, but asking for feedback on the changes. So what change, what is the, the way to go? Um, how to work. So please, if you have any suggestions, especially, especially if you use a pen and you see some issues, um, uh, report them here because it's very valuable. If you, you, you should check it out. So yeah, this is a place left click, select came up on the user feedback forums on dev talk, the blender .org. So yeah, left click is getting, it's getting, uh, it's the right direction. You think it's the right direction? I think I'm going to still be using uh, left click select. If you were to change that, you'll change it in the same place as before in the input section, but we were, the interface is being <laughs> worked on because right now at the bottom, yes, in a weird place, in a box, we don't know we don't have boxes like this anywhere else unless, yeah, anyway, that's where the changes are happening right now. Left click, right click, same place as before, but all the way to the bottom. But there you will find two options. Yes, people love options. Which one is the one that people are going to love the most? I think is the A select all toggles. The name is terrible. We need to change it. But basically remember that discussion about the A double A to select deselect. Well, that is back. You can now use the same, the same behavior as the 2.79. So you have A for the select a again to select so you don't have to tap it twice you basically just press a and it's a toggle just like blender 279 you have a bunch of objects a deselects a again selects in blender 2.8 uh, with this option uh, enabled now you can press a to select a, a to deselect same thing all right and the one that i hope it becomes a uh, default <laughs> because Spacebar, uh, in, in, in many other softwares for like animation, especially it's, um, it, it's playback, right? You, you're watching a movie, you're playing, uh, you're, you're editing a video, you press spacebar and it plays back, uh, for the time being, this is being used for the uh, floating toolbar, which is a, an, an quick way of accessing the tools that you will find here on the toolbar as well. So it's really handy. Like if you're sculpting, for example, um, if you're sculpting, I wanted to go to sculpt mode, then you will find them all here. I think it's better to just learn the shortcuts at this point, because with the new, uh, split between tools and, uh, brushes now sculpt, for example, has 
so many tools that is it's uh, not the easiest to to find um, some of the other ones the texture paint for example have less uh, options so that one is easier to find but I still think that spacebar will um, be better used as playback so that way you can just use it and then it goes playback do you think we should add a new option here for search maybe in 2.7 spacebar is search and is the most accessible like it's you can press it with like half your hand if you want with your face if you were like smashing your face you hit spacebar so do you think uh, it should go there right now the right now is on f3 and uh, for some people i know it's uh, not the most uh, um accessible because some keywords you have to press function and then f3 because they have it inverted um on on the mac if you're on a mac you don't you don't even worry because it's command f it's a is its own key if you're on a mac if you're on a, on a, on, on a, another operating system like linux or windows f3 is a key for searching and then you can just start typing it works just the same q for questions no q is for quick favorites which is very handy when you don't have anything it should uh, should tell you like right like give you some some something there anyway spacebar so should we have an option or maybe the last option should be custom and then you set it to whatever you want an operator but um maybe that that will be one option that fixes everything because basically it's like having a little panel for for <laughs> bringing back 2.7 more or less um yeah next let's see that was left click collections visibility yes that is a new popover that might become two uh, like a, a single popover there's a few proposals going around but basically it's a way to um let me open um let, let's let, let me open for example a file that has that someone has been a good boy and is being uh, split into um into let's see the spaceship into collections because i want to see collections working here so yes this uh, this blend file here I'm gonna leave the credits up here this uh, blend file contains collections collections that are nicely named they're um, nested even here you can see it and these collections now you can also if you were for example full screen and you wanted to a uh, to 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 see to hide the collections or not you can now access this popover for now maybe it will come the same pop it will become the same popover as this one for uh, hiding the the um, the visibility of objects let me make this screen bigger for you oh it's actually big enough am i blind collections visibility this is a popover that will show you the um, collections and you can see for example if you have an object selected it will be highlighted with a little dot in which collection this object is there so kind of kind of what we had here remember in the in the header like if you have an object and then you move it to another layer with m it will show the little the, the dot that is here in this um, that the active object is in this layer or actually it would be ah yeah it's gray if there is something and it will be orange if there is uh, the active object and now it if there is something it's gonna be it's gonna have a dot like a circle and the dot the fill dot is when the object is active there from here on you can also disable the uh, visibility of the yes the visibility oh you can drag and drop oh well you can do you can click on them just like in the good old times maybe it would be nice to have it back that you can click and drag i love that that feature and we should have it everywhere so with this one you can change the visibility and the selectability so it will um it, it would be sort of like having those little squares down there problem being that it shows also the uh, there is a space here and it shows the nested um the the nesting it basically shows every collection which can lead to performance issues if you have hundreds of collections because this menu is going to be huge so we still have to deal with that it's can um it's gonna be a bit uh, tricky but yes also uh, what i mentioned that there might be like this 
might be um, combined with this popover is that maybe this interface could be much smaller. Maybe we just use icons instead of mesh curve face. Maybe if icons were um, clear enough, you will have them. Um, you you could identify them more better, more better, better more. So yeah, maybe this will become one. Who knows? There is a proposal and this is the, wait for it, the beginning of what could be local view. Local view, for those who don't know, if you don't know it, then you're living under a rock. Local view, it's the amazing feature that allows you to select objects, press the slash uh, on your numpad or also view um, view global slash local because it's a toggle and then it will basically hide everything else that you don't have selected and then center the view here in the objects and then it's a toggle because then you can also press slash again and it will go back where you were it's just very nice very straightforward so in uh, 2.8 there's still no way to hide selections uh, sorry hide collections per viewport there's no no way at the moment so the proposal that was made by, um, it was a um, uh, combined effort by the Dalai Felinto and Willem. They uh, were discussing how to bring local view back plus having per collection uh, viewport and maybe even leaving a bit more room here in the uh, already crowded outliner. So we have in the outliner, we have all the eyes for the for the visibility, the selectability, and then the viewport for like when you're linking your objects or like a more permanent way to toggle things. And then uh, the renderability for the F12 render. So the proposal is about m removing these options from here and then just leaving them here in the, view in the viewport itself. So imagine if we didn't have this uh, two columns will be so much cleaner, you could fit more things or you could even bring some of uh, other options here for like excluding uh, which right now is a bit hidden you have to right click view layer set exclude which is a bit annoying um, if we could just maybe make it a bit more accessible here with an icon or uh, somebody suggested that since in the new outliner you can't see when an object is patented um, to another one for example if I want to patent this area light to this light prop I can, now they're patented, but there's no way to see it. And somebody suggested that they could be like, when you select an object, it could be like an icon that says, like, like has a patent icon, and then the it will highlight the, the, the children. So that would be pretty, pretty nice. And I think it would be a, a quick way to see the relationship between objects because objects can only have one parent. Unlike in real life. <laughs> okay, I need to, Cheer with you because I spent the weekend in Barcelona in Blendiveria. This other, um, this other, this uh, meeting of uh, Blender users from Iberia, from uh, Spain mainly, and uh, yeah, the Peninsula Iberica, and it was awesome. There was Pepeland there. We talked about Grease Pencil. We discussed about things to improve, and it was awesome. It was like 160 people, so basically half of Blender conference but just with Spanish people interested in Blender. So pretty awesome. Next year might be in um, Madrid. Off topic aside, let's move on to one little sad topic. So if you are, um, you know, uh, have a, a, a soft heart and you really use the Blender internal, then <laughs> If you use cycles, then you don't care. But basically the light type Hemi, so when you add a, so here in Blender 2. Point, cycles, no, it didn't It didn't work on cycles. But in uh, Blender 2.7, um, you could add a lamp and a lamp type Hemi. This Hemi light is basically a Hemi sphere. So it's a half a sphere that it will light your scene, your, 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 your everything, your your objects, your everything. 
and it wouldn't have shadows. So it was very useful for like uh, making field lights, making like like a, a bounce, fake a bounce lighting. And uh, a lot of people don't seem to care. Actually, I, I tweeted about it like, hey, goodbye, Emmy. And some people always, what did, what did it do? I mean, I was, I was so used to cycles. And then yes, if you were using Blender internal, then you will know. This uh, lamp, it's not supported by cycles and it, it's not supported by EV either. So it didn't really have a, 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 uh, like a place in Blender 2.8. So farewell, Hemilite, we're gonna miss you. Probably only old people are going to miss you, such as myself, but here you are. We need to move on. And we need to move on also because this video, this topic is about EV, EV optimization slash workbench also, but mainly EV. So EV, the extra easy or extremely easy virtual no viewport environment engine. That those, that's what EV means, of course. It's not related to a, a, a fantasy animal that you can catch. This um, EV was had a, so much uh, improve, so many improvements last week and a, a bit more. So, uh, so many of the improvements were optimizations, just making it faster, making it better. And all of this work is done by Clement. He's just amazing. And the more time he has uh, to, to fix these things, and this is not even in the beta, so he doesn't have all the reports from weird graphics cards yet. But I heard that it's working much better, especially on Macs also working better. And uh, now, for example, on other kind of optimizations, is that the lamps, especially the sun lamp, now the the energy of a sun lamp, it's uh, finally matching both. Um, whoops. Ha! Huh, I don't get used to the shortcut yet to change uh, three chords. So there you go. So uh, the energy of the lamps, the the um, the sun lamp, was always tricky to uh, match between cycles and EV. They were totally different. So the goal at the end of the 2.8 era is that EV and uh, cycles match as, as much as possible. Of course, they are different render engines. EV is not just, it's not a preview for cycles. Uh, I mean, it could be, but it's that's not the goal. EV is its own engine. So, uh, it, it makes sense that, it, they, but they live in the same software, so it makes sense that they match. So now uh, if you have, for example, a um, sun lamp in EV, and then you decide to render with cycles, then the lighting matches. So um, that's fantastic. It didn't used to do that. I mean, maybe it sounds silly. Now that you do it, yeah, of course it matches, right? No, well, before it didn't. So now it does, so now be happy. And grateful to Clement. Next thing to be grateful for, there is a support for extension tab types on the image texture node. I don't know if I mentioned this one before. This one sounds because this is from the beginning of last week. So if you're under the uh, shading settings, for example, on on your um, on your node setup, and then you, for example, add an image texture. Now the uh, yeah, I think I mentioned it. Now I mentioned that, that clip, extend, and repeat, these uh, are now shared across the, um, uh, sorry, re re share across EV and Cycles too, because it wasn't supported by EV. Now it is. It doesn't work in the box projection mode, by the way. Um, it's kind of difficult, slow, and produce a lot of code duplication. This is not something I'm, by the way, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm actually reading from the, <laughs> from the list of, of, things that I want to show. I'm, I'm actually going to leave it this here. So we all read it. So yes, this is what I did over the week. I've been copying all the commit logs from, uh, I read every commit logs. I don't read the newspaper. I don't know exactly what's going on in Argentina or in the Netherlands, but I, I read the, like a newspaper, but the commit logs, when I see something pretty cool. And when I see uh, Clement's name on the commit logs, it's like, ah, oh, there would be something cool. And usually there is such as this one. So I, I copy pasted this into a document and this is how I read the news. So here's the, here's the formula if you wanna make a Blender, Blender Tomorrow YouTube channel. Eevee, add support for interpolation modes in environment texture nodes. Yes, environment texture nodes. Um, 
also has interpolation no modes. So they are uh, like linear, closest, cubic, and smart are also supported now by EV. I would love to have one that doesn't have interpolation. So you can do like pixel art, for example. That would be pretty nice, I think. Me thinks. What do you think? I think we Blender Internal had that. Or Cycles also has it, that you can have an image in Cycles that don't have, um, I think, that doesn't have interpolation. Or you do it in the image that, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit lost here, but I'm not gonna get sidetracked with this. So, hmm, anyway, uh, it's, it's great for like uh, pixel art. So, more news. Partial support for the light path node. Yes, it is. I think I already mentioned this last week, but it's just basically um, so amazing that I'm gonna mention it again. Light path node is partially supported now. Its camera is shadow, diffuse, is glossy. Uh, some of the other ones have like little caveats here, and you can read more in the commit logs. But yeah, or you can pause this video when you're done watching it and then continue. SSR. Screen space reflections, only fade based on reflected pixel position. So basically it's an improvement on a screen space uh, reflection. Just just throwing it out there because it, I mean, it doesn't mean a lot. I don't have a file to show, but if you had issues with screen space reflections, then this, it's for you. For example, uh, subsurface scattering and screen space reflections, they didn't used to work when they were inside uh, groups. So if you had a group shader, then it didn't work. Now they do. So go open these old files with shaders and groups. Now they work and you can make nice little groups. You can link them. You can do pretty much everything. So serial samples in cycles, pixel art. Yes, that's, that's like the one way to go. <clears throat> optimized color ramps, yes, color ramp is now, um, yeah, optimized, bam, okay, it's like reading this thing, okay, this, this one is actually awesome, I'm gonna cheer with you, before showing, because it's just too exciting, this, by the way, this is called Triple Carmeliet, it's a uh, Belgium, um, Belgium, 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 Belgium beer, add light threshold value, so, what does it mean, in Blender internal, Eternal, we should change its name. It's not Blender Internal. It's forever, Blender Forever. In Blender Forever, Blender Eternal, the lamps have a limit that you can set on like a distance. So they will only be here. When you set the sphere, it will draw a sphere around and you could set in distance what would be the, like how far the light would affect. It was mainly visual, you know, like, like, like what it would be affecting after that point, it wouldn't affect anything else. But the way Blender Internal uh, used to work, it, it didn't bring like so much, you know, some improvements. However, for real time, this is super important. It means that the if you have a set with lots of lights, for example, let's, uh, let's open this, the spaceship. So for example, this set has so many lights. So you have um, lights from all over, which they're not here. I, I didn't have it in the enabled. So for example, here you have so many lights that it can be tricky to uh, to optimize a, sh a shot like this. You want to go around and add like a lamp in the back that it's next to the wall, but you don't want to affect this lamp to affect the rest. So now there is a setting for that, that we can set here in, it's a per lamp option and uh, I think it's not for the um, sun lamps, but you can find it in the area and the point lamps. And it's called, for now, I'm thinking the issue, we should change the name. It's called custom distance. This is this uh, sub panel right here. And uh, I think maybe it should, call be, it should be called limit distance because that way you are also telling what it does, right? It's limiting the distance. Also, it will limit, not in this case, but it will limit the, the, the shadows that it makes in like, that's a clip end. And that way you can make it so the lamp, or in this case is very, um, very strong. By, by default, it goes very, it's very big, but you can make it so, as you can see here, it only affects up to a certain point. So 
that means optimizations, better performance. So the um, here you can say this is an important change. Look at this is copy pasted from the commit logs. Isn't this nice? After spending hours, maybe days coding this feature, now the uh, developers also write a nice little Bible for it. For example, all lights have an finite influence radius. So in order to avoid costly type, the distance is first computed automatically based on the light threshold. So first it's automatic, but you can also go and tweak it one by one. The uh, distance is computing from here, from where the lamp begins, especially if, if it's a point lamp, it's easier to see. So we're from the, where the lamp begins to the end in, uh, in a inverse square fashion. This um, setting is in the setting panels shadow tab. Setting panels shadow, what? That I haven't seen. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong window. Light properties, light custom distance. And this one settings, pan, render settings panel shadow tab. Oh, you can actually limit that one. Shadows. Huh, light threshold. Ah, that's that's like the global setting. But you can also just do it per uh, per lamp. So you can override this. Um, I, I thought it meant the um, inverse squares fall off, which in Blender internal, eternal, you could do it with um, here when you limit it, not cycles, Blender render. You could change it to be inverse square or you have a, even a custom curve. So you could have, you could draw how far the uh, like like the shape of the fall off from the center to of the of the lamp to the end. So this is pretty nice. Where can I find the commits? The commits you can find them in developer.blender.org. Then you could go to, for example, well I know the URL, but maybe I can browse it for you where where, where it is. Projects BF Blender. So if BS Blender 2.8, for example. And in 2.8, you can find the, I usually just know the, the URL. Let's see if Blender has it, repository. Yes, repository, Blender. Now in Blender, you need to go to branches because it's a 2.8 branch. And then you can just, in the Blender 2.8 branch, you can go to history, by default it's in history. So here you can see all the things that people have been working on. So all these are all the changes, for example, that um, Clement has been working on until recently. So 38, so uh, five minutes ago, there was a commit. Um, then you can read, this is basically what I do, like what I do here. One, this boy, Pablo Vasquez, was removing the themes. Yes, not, not doing, not adding anything, removing. Um, but here, for example, you can see that on Sunday, people have been working on in the key maps, on uh, pretty much yeah everything all the optimizations from Eevee they were done on Saturday so talk about a nice weekend amazing next the um, uh, yeah you should read the log so you get a bit more of an idea then optimizations on Eevee bypass light power calculation so basically you can see the numbers you don't have to be a PhD to read it it's just faster basically then optimization. But the ones that are very interesting are actually these ones, the irradiance smoothing and the irradiance grid. So basically when you have an irradiance grid, that irradiance, radiance, which is one of these um, light probes, if you had a light probe, irradiance volume. So with this, for example, you can fake the uh, bouncing of the lights. You can make it like some fake GI. Problem is that once you reach the edges and you probably have, for, like for example, if you had another box right next to it, there could be, um, there could be issues at the, at the edges. You could be like, yeah, it couldn't match, couldn't fade properly. So um, now the borders of this, of the shape, the, the corners are all round. So you can put them closer together and together with the smoothing, now you can actually put them together and then make a better transition between them so it's not so harsh. So it's pretty cool. And then glossy reflection clamping, yes. You can now reduce the noise coming from very bright light sources, like a sun, that can be found on distant HDR eyes. What is this for? Well, to improve, uh, to, to reduce the noise on, on EV, just like you do on cycles. Faster renders, amazing. 
by default it's disabled if you don't want any clamping but you can still clamp then filter quality settings and I'm already running out of time but I'm gonna go very fast through it filter quality settings they can be a uh, tweak per glossy reflection cube map so you can have a better um, um, glossy reflection on your meshes the performance for the workbench this one is huge but the one that is actually even huge error is the one um, that I wanted to show I don't want to the show to end before showing it these are the notes that like you see I can't I'm making a one hour episode and I still kind of go through all of the new things there are um, way too many but there is even one that is more exciting that is not implemented yet on Blender so it's not Blender today it's Blender next week it's improvements on Grease Pencil but not improvement like mega mega improvements going from a file that was 3 FPS 3 frames per second to like over 20 frames per second or sometimes improvements greater than five or six times faster so one of the issues with the uh, grease pencil is the performance it, it it's not as fast as it could be even for a 2d um, um for 2d animation so now it is now it's huge the improvement imagine putting a mind like clema together with antonio it's like you get these kind of amazing things um so and actually this is what they were working on uh the, during the weekend you can see Antonio committing during Saturday and uh, Sunday so yeah I will I will move on and while I go asking uh, answer asking the questions answering the questions I want to leave a video that it's a shame that has only 4,000 views when it should have all the views in the world I'm gonna share it I'm gonna share it until it it gets worn out this amazing remake of Hilda it's a it's a series by Netflix the, the the actual the original one this is just a fun art it's just a fun art I mean it's just amazing but it's done with with the uh, with crisp pencil plus some coloring and effects like motion blur and stuff in on, on after effects but the actual drawings the lines and everything uh, all, all the lines especially the, I think the coloring was not there because performance but the lines amazing in crisp pencil so pretty nice and this video should have way more attention and not only attention this youtube channel that i cannot pronounce this youtube channel people go now go and subscribe even if you haven't seen it just go and subscribe he's uploading videos and tutorials little short tutorials on on how to um do amazing things and just there for free is amazing so go check it out um, yes, just wanted to do this little advertisement. Advertisement for nothing. For something so cool. Ah, uh, here's the optimizing. Like I had so many things lined up, but I need to go and ask answer the questions. Here, Blender today. I hope your web the server is now alive. Okay, forty four. I'm not gonna be able. I'm sorry, guys. It's forty four questions. Hi, Pablo. I'm trying to do a Pi menu to. To switch the editor and workspaces with one button not control page app what is the python code i'm um, i don't know but questions like this you should go to dev talk the blender.org and there is a section called python and here you can just ask this question so please go and ask it because that way people can find it here in the future and the python api is being worked on so it's good that all these questions get answered there Next question, Judy says, Hi Pablo, in the live stream 24, I asked you about a better UV visualization. You told me to make a proposal. Okay, that is a nice proposal. Thank you. I will I will I will have a look. Oh, this one. Yeah, it's amazing. I actually shared it. It was posted two days ago and it's already 58. And I upvoted it here. You can see the proof. I upvoted it. And I shared it with uh, the developers. But um I I hope they have a too much time. To, to do it because it's amazing it's basically a way this one the UV ones we already thought about it and it was we we just didn't have time during the code quest but we thought about it during the code quest to have it and to um, to display it but it was hard to how to do it if you have a thousand objects in your scene is an what is it an overlay it applies to everything maybe only to the op active objects right so that was the tricky part. I think only to the active object will be, uh, or selected objects will be the best because otherwise 
applying a texture to all the objects in the scene is going to be super slow. Next, Parker says, how hard would it be to have two different timelines open at the same time? One to trim clips and one another for the final edit. How hard? Well, it, with the new dependency graph is not so hard because it allows to do these kind of things for like um, having two different times on different windows. Ajero says, where can we expect a quit prompt? Oh, a, a quit prompt with save cancel quit buttons on windows. Just like it is on Linux. Well, that's been worked on actually. There is a, there is a thread on developer.blender.org on the, here on this website. There is a thread, there is already discussions about it. Riley Brown, hey, will the physics engine, engine see improvements? Well, yes, because the physics engine is bullet. So like bullet engine, which is the same bullet that is used by Houdini, for example. So, um, I, and it's been actively uh, worked on, it's used by on video games, it's used all over the place. So yeah, it's a short answer, it's gonna be <laughs> worked, uh, it's gonna be improved, I bet, because 2.8 is a series, right? Regarding the UI to interact with those physics, yes, it will be improved as part of the uh, new, uh, the interaction mode project on Blender 2.80 something series, 81, 82. 83. <laughs> that I know. Hi Pablo, do you think would it be possible to have a drag and drop of SVX and objects 281? Yeah, actually it, it should totally be possible. Right now on, um, yeah, it should be possible. Yeah, yeah, actually I bet like if you tell, uh, if if uh, Jack's, if Jack looks, he's re actually reading this, he's gonna do it <laughs> because he did the drag and drop for the file open, blend file open. Hi Pablo, do we know when Blender 2.8 will come in move, move into master? Uh, no, no, there is no no actual plan for the time being. And there is no real reason to switch. There is really no, um, it's just a detail basically. Now, uh, if you go to the build bot, Blender is like, you can get 2.8, 2.8 and master, it's just the same for the time being. Um, next question. By the way, um, here, when you said drag and drop of SVX and OVG, OVGs, this is a very easy, uh, not easy, but a, a, a sort of easy task for a new developer. Just look at the code that was committed recently by Shaq Luke on uh, drag dropping of blend files and just look at it and maybe have it, uh, keep it in mind. Maybe it's a good one for learning how to code in Blender. Mcard says, when will we get basic interactive editing in the Compositor? Well, I I wish I could say something about it, but there's no, at the moment, not the Compositor is not getting any love, unfortunately, but uh, it should, it should. Yoda.Ninja says, hello, what about the F6 menu? Will it pop up under a course or like in 2. Point, what? Isn't that the case? Uh, yeah, it is the case, it just doesn't have a shortcut. If you do uh, edit at just last operation, you actually have it here. So you could um, just right click, um, assign shortcut, press F6. And now when you do something, press F6 and it appears just like before. Um, it, it's just been removed from the F6 menu because the goal of the minimal key map is that you have all the room for activities. So F5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, up to 11 are, um, up to 10 are all free for you to apply to anything. So yeah, that's the goal of the minimal key map. Next question, where in 2.8 is subdivide smooth option? Isn't it in the edit? Uh, hmm, it should be here, mesh, um, vertices. That's a very good question. Subdivide smooth. After you subdivide, you have to. Oh yeah, you can apply smoothness here. Hmm. No, it's it's not there. But maybe should we add it back to the subdivide subdivide smooth? Basically, it's a uh, you can just change the toggle here. But it's just a matter of adding the operator. It shouldn't be too hard. Uh, no audio. Hey, <laughs> thank you for the no audio. Uh, wow, you guys were watching it here. Marco says, uh, will Blender.studio be updated with here in Spring Movie? Eventually, I, I, yes. If you wanna, if you work on websites and wanna update it, please be my guest. Um, what are the advantages of having three platforms about features or 
of code and Blender software. Code, dev talk and Blender community right click select. Blender community right click select is independent, right? It's, it's run by Jason Van Gamster. He's not a developer. He's not a, um, um, he's just uh, a very um, involved user of the community, just like anybody else, just like me or when we started this website, everything. And uh, he also runs Blender Artists, but it's independent. That's the beauty of it, that it's not owned by anyone, it's just independent. Blender Community is an independent project. Code.blender.org, it's a place where developers can share documents, for example, like a long, long description about the like papers, you know, like more of, of a presentation. The Dev Talk forums instead is a it's a forum where people can ask questions. So in this one, for example, people cannot leave like the the the, the blocks are only made by the developers. So that is the that is the the difference between them. Um, how to read topology in Blender 2.80? Same way as 2.7 hasn't changed. Uh, NVIDIA's optic denoiser. Yes, I saw it. I saw it. There's a, um, actually right now the optics is now GP, uh, GPL compatible. So it should be possible to make it work with Blender. Waka Jordan says, hi, Pablo, love the new haircut. <laughs> I was wondering, um, I'm looking at the questions too here. Um, you're writing in Spanish. I'm going to make a live stream in Spanish in a bit at blenderoy.com oy as in today in Spanish hey Pablo I was wondering if there is any way to hotkey the new isolate from viewport no not for the time being no happy 40th stream ah that's so nice thank you can we have an option to change the hotkey for opening and closing panels sub panels instead of pressing the A key yeah that is hard coded at the moment with the A key um, which one, which shortcut would you use? But uh, yeah, that should be brought. I, I'm afraid I'm not that uh, savvy with the uh, coding to, to do it for you, sorry. But um, what would you propose? Just let me know here in the in the comments, reply. Nathan, hey Pablo, I wanted to say I'm happy with the feedback I've gotten on the developer team. Hey Nathan, yeah, he actually is, he made a feature. What happened to the shortcut to vertex vert edge face? It used to be control tab. It's uh, now one, two, three. So if you're in edit mode, you see one, two, and three. It just changes here the mode selection mode. Um, K Durer says, greeting from Switzerland. Baking function plan for color ID maps in Blender 2.8. Where should I place this feature request? Well, I think uh, we can. But you you can post it in right click select. It's not of a of a feature request, but just try to get um, the people involved. Make a proposal, ask questions, uh, or or like actually try to make it as complete as possible. Developers they love when their feature is as complete as possible, though, so they can just basically be inspired with screenshots, with uh, gifs, and videos how it should work. It's uh, go go to right click select, and you will find some very awesome. Um, a uh, mockups so like this one for example with a nice gif and and it just basically shows it was done is a mockup maybe not that effects but it pretty much looks like the final deal right and developers really like that so oh no i lost my <laughs> the question that i was answering blender today ev goodies hey 48 comments and uh, nobody's giving some love some upvotes for my karma. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go. Where was I? Um, here. Do you think we can uh, we could see a proper material browser come to Blender? Yes, the asset manager. Yes, I cannot wait for it, and it's almost there. It just needs UI interface. So um, I don't know if there is proposals in right click select about the asset manager, but if they are, uh, let's see asset manager materials outliner ah, there 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 should be um please people propose to um, make mockups about the asset manager there is already um mockups by um, willem but the more the better right so we can have more 
And for example, this is what I was explaining before that now you can, by status, you can filter by the tasks that are done. They're, they're finished, they're part of Blender now. There are some of them are archived, maybe duplicates, and there's uh, some that are in development, but basically it's just a matter of time until all the other tasks get updated. And um, I'm already, <laughs> the website is slow again. Are you guys visiting? Are you guys giving the hug of death? Okay, I can answer some questions from here. Um, but I will, to be fair, I will have to go to the beginning. Okay, it loaded, it loaded. Um, what happened to the circle select in the UV editor? Ah, it should be back. Uh, it, it didn't go anywhere, but it should be back. And um, if it's not back, it's loading the comments now. Yes, it should be back. If it's not back, then we have to just report it when it's the beta. Um, Dev talk should have a sort by likes in the thread. Yeah, I hate that. The the that it doesn't have one. The Dev talk uh, website is it's using this this cat this not Discord um, Discourse, and uh, it doesn't have. It's part of the software. It doesn't have that. Yeah. Okay. It loaded the questions. So many questions. Um, any news on the light linking? No, I wish. Happy forty. Thank you, Stefan. Feature suggestion, search for feature option. Um, yeah, well, search, that would be amazing. If the search, I, I wish we could improve the search in Blender itself. Okay, I'm um, running out of time. It's uh, two minutes past 10 here, and I will go through five more questions and then we, we, we call it a day, I think. There's so many questions in every part that I'm <laughs> A bit overwhelmed. Let's see. Five more questions. Lapis C says, could it be possible to take the viewport and use it average or dominant color as a variable for the theme? <laughs> wow, that is, yeah, you can do it with Python, but yes, you can with Python. Um, absolutely. Um, you can change the theme with Python so you can do anything. Osios Prieto says, I would like to know if the Chris Pencil API is already live or if we can know when it will be. Um, well, there is an API as, as for the setting, changing the settings, but not for actually drawing as far as I know. Um, please, Antonio, if you're watching this, let me know. Um, but I don't think it's, uh, you can like do that advanced stuff. All right, someone else says, I can't find a way to render wireframes of mesh objects. They don't have faces because Blender internal wire material is gone. Do you have any ideas on how to do this? No, with the modifier only, but that would be change. We would actually be modifying your mesh, so no. Um, hmm, no. Sorry, I don't know, but it's it should be a feature that should be added at some point. So maybe we can pester um, Clemor or another developer to do it. Are the developers aware of Jiggle Armature? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I think the guys at the um, uh, on the guys are using it at the uh, Spring Open Movie Project. I think so. I don't know. What's Blender's official Instagram page? None. Blender doesn't have an official Instagram page. The official social media for Blender, you can find it on the bottom, like on the footer of Blender.org. These are all the official social media. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. There is also one that it's not here that I forgot um, to add, but it's on mastodon.social slash um, at Blender. And this is a, a mirror basically of the of the Twitter account. Um, but yeah, these are the official ones and the development ones. There's also development for, you, for uh, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. The same, but for development. These are the official ones that like, the official for Blender, which is already has 28,000. It already went more than, uh, it, more followers than Ton, more followers than uh, who else was left. Uh, Blender Nation had 27, now it is 128. And uh, the, the last, uh, the final boss is uh, Enterprise, which has 32,000, 33, 34, 40 some, 30 something. So I'm following the Blender because we made it like uh, two, day, two years ago, less, no, two years ago. So 
we are fighting there like the, the follower count yes let's get there it reminds me of the mortal kombat list you know when the character goes up fighting the final bosses um tab or control space for search no tab no tab is edit mode let's let's not change that one all people are gonna burn the place down um Vertigo Studios, hello. Will we be able to build Blender from source on Linux anytime soon? The install process gets halted and install devs. Uh, I am actually compiling, um, like I, I compiled today and I had compilation issues last week, but which actually, uh, and, and now maybe there is some, oh yeah, ah, it's GPU updates only. But yeah, I, I compiled recently, so actually this shouldn't change anything. I'm compiling, recompiling. Yeah, you see? It's compiling Blender live. Five minutes late after the, the, the end of the, the episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, if you're using Git, I just learned a new one. You probably know because you're a nerd and use Git. But I learned that I can do Git checkout, um, the branch, and then you can do add and do like curly brackets last week. And it will actually do a checkout of the last week. And I, I was learning this because I wanted to compile Blender from last week and from this week to compare. So when I show something, I can show the last, how was last Blender today and how is the current one. And I compiled it, but last week it was crashing uh, on startup because there was a, a bug on the GPU thingy. Um, so now, <laughs> Yeah, I the one week that I wanted to show how Blender was last week and compare one on one, I couldn't. So I'm gonna try it next week, which is, by the way, the last, if I'm not wrong, yes, it's gonna be the last Blender Today of the Year live stream from Amsterdam because I'll be heading home for the holidays and I wish I could do it from there, but internet is not as good. I might be able to do offline videos, but I'm not sure about the live streams as we do now. So don't miss the next episode because it's going to be a special one. I uh, think it's about time to wrap it up. Sorry about all the questions, the overwhelming <laughs> 51 questions. Actually, if I update, probably 52 questions plus the ones here on the live stream um, here up here. I'm, I'm just overwhelmed by the nice nice support you have guys it's just amazing i'm pretty happy to be part of this community i hope you are too and i hope to see you again next week because it's it's just insane i spent most of the time showing new features and i didn't even go through all of the new features i was talking with the people at the blender uh, blendiveria the blender meeting in barcelona and they were saying like how, how do you manage to find new things to talk about every week that doesn't happen ever in every software like sometimes some softwares release once a year and they only have a few features i don't know how they do it developers are just crazy people so let's uh, join the crazy next week at the same time on the same channel subscribe if you want to see these kind of things and share it share share let the people know about this kind of uh, content that is happening and that blender is being developed every day and we get together to see news i will see you again if i don't see you uh, if i hear you after the loudness of this music remember that at the end i put some music just if you're wearing headphones watch out because in three two there you go it's just amazing. This music goes with everything. At some point, I'll have to change it for season number three next year. But for now, I'll see you again. Next year, same. Next year, no, same next week, same place, same time. Ciao.